takes place in 1888, I think. Jay and today I'm here with my April wrap-up for 2019. I read a total of 12 books so I'm going to be splitting this into two parts. This is part one with the first six books that I read this month so without further ado let us get started. The first book that I read this month is Big Little Lies by Leanne Moriarty and I ended up giving this a five out of five stars. I absolutely loved it a lot more than I thought I was going to. This book follows three kindergarten moms whose children are all starting in the same class this coming year. Jane is a young single mother who is hiding from her past. Madeline is a divorced who is trying to deal with her daughter starting in the same class as her ex-husband's new daughter. And then not to mention that her teenage daughter, Abigail, is choosing Bonnie, the stepmother, over her. And then Celeste seems to have the perfect life but is hiding something that nobody would ever wish for. Orientation day comes around and Ziggy, Jane's son, is accused of a very violent action and this causes a chain of events that leads up to trivia night where one of the parents ends up dead. So like I said, I liked this book a lot more than I originally thought I would. It's a pretty big hefty book, but I flew through it so quickly. I could not put it down. When I did put it down, it was all I could think about and I wanted to pick it back up so I could learn more about the story. I think that the characters and especially the three moms were such an amazing part of this book. They were really the highlight for me. I just really liked how there was such a big focus on female friendships in this book and how each mom stood up for the other moms in their own way and they all challenged not only each other's views but also their own views on certain things which I thought was really well done as well. I just really liked watching the three moms grow and develop as the story progressed and I just felt so invested in these three women's lives and I just needed to know what was going to happen with each of them throughout the entire book. They each had their own unique voice which I really liked. It was very easy to distinguish who was talking. I love how this was basically just a murder mystery but it also dealt with very difficult topics as well. There was discussions about rape and eating disorders, domestic violence, abuse, bullying, and it was all done in a very easygoing fashion if that makes sense. Like there were very dark elements to this book but it was woven with humor that made it more easily digestible. I also really liked how the book started six months before the murder actually happened and it kind of like went up until trivia night when the murder happened and I definitely had my guesses of who was killed and what happened but they all ended up being wrong but I'm actually really happy with how it did end. I also really liked the like parent police interviews at the beginning of each chapter. I think that that was like a really fun element to include in the story so like I said, 5 out of 5 stars. I highly recommend you guys check this out and I'm really excited to watch the TV show now because I feel like I'm allowed to now that I've read the book. The next book that I read was Blue Lily, Lily Blue by Maggie Stiebotter. This is the third book in the Raven Cycle so I'm not going to give a synopsis but I really liked it. I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars. I'm definitely very interested to see where the story goes in the final installment. I'm so invested in Blue Blue and her Raven Boys and I'm just so excited to see how it concludes. I also really loved the addition of the new characters in this book. I'm so excited to see more of Piper. I think I love Piper and Colin Greenmantle a little too much but I really hope that they're back in the next book. Honestly I would just love to have a spin-off series of those two. I think that their banter is hilarious and I just like love them probably too much. But yeah like I said I'm super excited for the fourth installment and I don't own it yet so I need to find a copy of it. The next book that I have is called How to Be Luminous and this is by Harriet Ruder Hapgood and I ended up giving this a 4 out of five stars. It follows Minnie and her two sisters who have always been eccentric taking after their 
mother who is an artist. When their mother goes missing one day, each sister has a very different way of coping. Minnie finds herself struggling with her colors, seeing the world in monochrome. She doesn't know how she's going to be able to be an artist if she is unable to see colors, so she's dealing with that. But then she's also dealing with the fact that she is experiencing mood fluctuations that her mother experiences, and it's kind of scaring her a little, so this is her story. I think that this book does a very good job dealing with very hard topics to talk about in a very realistic and sensitive manner. It covers grief, loss, various mental disorders and illnesses. It covers how everybody deals with loss and grief in their own way. I really like seeing how each sister dealt with the loss of their mother in very, very different ways, but they all ended up coming together to support one another in the end. I also really liked how this book dealt with mental illness as well as medication and how it's okay to reach out for help if you need it and that, yeah, there is stigma around medication, but it's okay and if you have the support system, then everything will be okay even though it may be difficult at times. I also really liked how the author included like a list of phone numbers in the back if you are dealing with mental illness and who you are able to contact for help. I liked Minnie for the most part except at times she definitely got on my nerves. I feel like a lot of her decisions and actions were very selfish which did make sense in the mental state that she was in but at the same time I was like girl just think about your actions for two seconds. I also really liked how the author included a deaf character in this book and how the characters were all constantly using BSL and I think that that was a very good addition to the story and it will probably be representative for a couple of people who don't see that a lot in books. So like I said overall I did enjoy the book. I gave it a four out of five stars and I really liked how it dealt with mental illness and grief. The next book that I read was Stalking Jack the Ripper by Carrie Manisicalo and I ended up giving this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. I definitely wanted to like it more than I did but I still did enjoy it. This takes place in 1888 and it follows a 17 year old named Audrey Rose who was raised to be a lady. She honestly can't help that her interests lie in very unladylike things. Any chance she gets, she is off in her uncle's laboratory dealing with forensic science. So when murders begin popping up in her hometown, she enlists the help of one of her uncle's students named Thomas for help solving these murders. So I'm like a huge, huge fan of serial killers, which sounds really creepy, but I just find them so fascinating. So when I found out that there was a retelling of Jack the Ripper, I was so so here for it. Unfortunately, fell a little short for me. I liked Audrey Rose for the most part, but at times she definitely got on my nerves. There were a lot of times where she just pissed me off so much. For instance, there was a lot of times where she was like the epitome of I'm not like other girls trope. It just got really old really, really quickly. I definitely enjoyed Thomas Cresswell, the love interest, a lot more than Audrey. I thought he was like the perfect mixture of like cocky and sarcastic, but also very charming. I really liked his interactions with Audrey and how sarcastic he was because that's my personality. So if I could find somebody who is as sarcastic as me, here for it. I'm a huge sucker for slow burn romances, which this definitely was, and also the hate to love trope, which this was, so I was just definitely here for this ship. The major complaint that I have for this book was the pacing. I think that it was a bit off. At times it was so slow and dragged on and on and I was just like, get to some action please. And then other times it was so fast paced that it didn't really make any sense why it was progressing so quickly. So I think that the balance between the two just wasn't really there. I also think that the ending was a bit rushed and it didn't really satisfy me to be honest, but overall it was an entertaining read, so 3.5. So the next book that I have, if you follow me on Twitter, you know that I was not the biggest fan of this book. It's Furyborn by Claire Legrand and I ended up giving this a 2 out of 5 stars, which I am so bummed out about because I thought I was really gonna love this because I read Sawkill Girls by the same author and like 
blew my mind, loved it so much. This one, so different, so boring. So if you are unaware, this book follows a prophecy that states that there is a sun queen who has the ability to control all seven powers. It follows a girl named Rael who has this ability but has been hiding it from everybody she knows for several years now. So when it is discovered that she has these powers, she is put on trial where she needs to prove that she is able to control all seven powers and if she fails, she will be executed. If not, she is the Sun Queen. And then it also follows Eliana who is a bounty hunter for the kingdom and she doesn't exactly agree with what she's doing but she needs to provide for her family so then one day her mother goes missing and she goes on a quest to save her. So like I said, I wanted to like this a lot more than I did, didn't like it, thought it was super boring. I liked the characters, but honestly, I liked the side characters more than our two main characters, and I would have rather just followed the side characters the entire time. It honestly just kind of felt like the same story was being told from two different perspectives, but it was just told twice because they're supposed to be years and years and years apart. So it just got repetitive really quickly for me and I was just bored throughout the whole thing so definitely a disappointment but a lot of people do like this book so I would definitely check it out if it sounds intriguing to you it just wasn't for me. And then the final book that I'm going to talk about for part one of this wrap up is City of Lost Souls by Cassandra Clare. We are slowly but surely getting through the mortal instruments. I'm almost done. Ah, It's been a three-year process guys. But I ended up giving this a 4.5 out of 5 stars. I think that this is definitely my favorite of the five that I've read so far. We'll see if Heavenly Fire takes the cake, but not 100% sure because I really did like this one. I think that this was a perfect balance of fast-paced action scenes but then also character development scenes and I think that it was really well done. I never wanted to put the book down and when I did have to put the book down I was constantly thinking about what was going to happen next and the characters and what was happening to them and I was just very invested in the story. I probably would have given this book a 5 out of 5 stars if it wasn't for the incest storyline because like why? I just don't understand why these books have to have so much incest in it. I don't think that it really benefits the story at all so... I'm just not here for the incest. Clary is still my least favorite character. I don't like her at all. I think that she makes the stupidest decisions just because of a boy and it just drives me crazy. I didn't really care for Jace that much in this book but I do still think that he's funny but I honestly didn't really care what happened to him. I definitely think that Simon is still one of my favorite characters. I just think he's a precious little cinnamon roll and nobody can tell me differently. I also really liked how we heard a lot from Isabel in this book. I really liked watching her grow more and how she learned that it was okay to be vulnerable at times. I think that that was a really great storyline to follow. Obviously, Magnus Bane is still my favorite character. I am so excited that I'm one step closer to being able to read the Bane Chronicles because I just need all the Magnus in my life. I did not like Alec in this book. He infuriated me and everything he did, I just wanted to like shake him and yell at him and just like, no. And then Sebastian, I did like in the last book. I thought he was very intriguing, but in this book, he got hella creepy hella fast and I was not here for it so we are canceling Sebastian but yeah this is my favorite so far definitely excited to read the finale hopefully next month is that gonna happen probably not because it's taken me three years to read this series so we'll see how it goes but stay tuned all right guys so that was my part one wrap up for April 2019 stay tuned for part two that will be up in a day after you see this video let me know down below if you guys have read any of these and what you thought of them and I'll see you all in the next video goodbye